now that the Eagles have lost to the Washington Commanders, are the Niners the team to beat in the NFC? No. No. Here's the thing. This is, and I knew it was going to happen. As soon as the Eagles lost, I tweeted, cue the tweets that the Eagles aren't for real. Yes, they lost to the Commanders, but that's an that's an in-division game. We know how in-division games can go. The 49ers lost to Colt McCoy in the Arizona Cardinals last year. Were they a bad team? Were they a team that weren't this close to making a Super Bowl? I still think the Eagles are the team to beat in the NFC. Division games are always funny. I don't put a lot of stock into them. That's just me personally. The Eagles roster is stacked. They've proven all the way up until then that they sh- should win or that they do win the games that they should. The 49ers haven't proven that up until mm-hmm. really this last couple weeks. So for me, it's still the Philadelphia Eagles are the team to beat in the NFC and most likely are looking at a number one seed. So we'll see. I think it's Philly. Where I see it is in the AFC, the team to beat is Kansas City. And I think it's yes. going to be that way for a very long time. Um, in the NFC, I don't know who the team to beat is. I don't know if it's Philly. Like, that loss to Washington was eye-opening. Then you look at Minnesota. That win over Buffalo was quite impressive. But frankly, who really has confidence in Minnesota? It's Kirk Cousins. That being said, he's a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo, who's playing decently. Right. So the Niners could be, they certainly could be the team to beat in the NFC. They haven't established that yet. Like, just squeaking out wins against bad, beaten-up teams isn't going to cut it. I mean, it's not, it it could cut it. It's not going to make you the team to beat. For if sure. the Niners could establish a standard where they're going to play a certain way no matter who their opponent is, then yeah, they certainly could because the NFC is wide open, but they haven't done it yet. And they should, they could. It's a veteran team. I don't know what's holding them back. It just feels like a veteran team that's trying to pace itself. It's a long season and I'm a little bit older, so I'm going to flip I'm going to turn it on in December. Like, okay, I hope you do. I hope you do because in 2019, that wasn't the way you handled things. Like, you guys were young, you guys were hungry, and now you guys are like, I don't, can we just get to the, can we fast forward? Going through the motions. It feels like it. It really does. It really does. Like, what's the least we can do to beat the Chargers this week? Like, man, you guys are playing with fire. And and if they didn't, because, look, 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 look. The Niners, they win, they beat the Chargers by six, and everyone's like, no. Go back and watch that game again. That game could have gone Either way, and what sealed the deal was special teams. Pinning them at the one, that was it. That was checkmate. If they didn't, if they called that a, a, a freaking touchback, who knows what would have happened because they had the better quarterback. And he would have had, no, nah, he didn't have any weapons, but that was checkmate. And that the Niners offense couldn't put the freaking game away. They got an extra three points because the Chargers turned the ball over on downs at their like 13 yard line because that's what happened. But. That was all special teams. So, and defense. Just want to put that out. I think the 49ers might be the roster to beat, but that's very different than the team to beat. Those are two Correct. completely different things right now. And I still, if if they go up against Dallas, Minnesota, and Hurts, I think every time they're going to be outmatched at the most important position in football, which is the quarterback position. And so anything can happen in those scenarios. I mean, frankly, if the Chargers had their, their wide receivers in this game, who would have won? Oh, the, char- the Chargers would have won that game. I, so yeah, they, they took not took care of business, but come on, like, they lost was not Harold a, Everett, yeah. who was their only weapon really in the past game, outside of Carter, who I guess is a weapon. I mean, he was like a fifth string receiver to go into the season, but they lost. If they didn't lose Everett at halftime, hell, if Herbert didn't go out it, right before half for that final drive. He was dealing. Just just so you know, let's be clear. That right there is the only reason they got up over two and a half sacks and saved your bacon this week because Chase Daniel came in and and got, or whoever it was, came in and and got sacked. So, oh, my bacon. You're lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Matthew Sanders says, Grant, I watched two years of highlights from Carolina with CMC. 70% of his big pass plays are check downs that go off script and the explosive runs get, he gets are inside most of the time. Creativity not required. Yeah, it was a different offense, though. He was playing with Cam Newton. He was playing his own read system. If he were playing with Trey Lance, it would be similar. But that's not – he's he's now he's under center. And they're trying to toss it to him to the side. They're trying to use it, 
use him like they use Raheem Mostert. That's what they're trying to do. And so far, they don't necessarily have the offensive line or the creativity to pull it off. I don't put it on McCaffrey, but it's not working right now. That I don't, and he's not a speed. He's not a speedster or burner. I mean, he doesn't. He's not Mostert. You can find when he breaks through the line and gets tracked down from behind pretty frequently. And and this isn't yeah. to take away. I love the Christian McCaffrey trade, especially for Trey Lance. I still stand behind that it was the right move to make, but he's not that player. That he is not Raheem Mostert as far as breakaway speed. That's not who he is. 